Hello and welcome back to some brand new episodes of Kyle Engineers. Today we're going to be looking at suspension geometry. This is a very requested subject. Now specifically we're going to be looking at caster, camber, kingpin inclination angle and scrub radius. Now these are all different concepts so I'm going to split them up into four different videos. I'd just like to say that the website MotoIQ Com has some really good reads on this handling stuff. You should definitely go and check that out after here. I didn't steal all my material from there, if that's what you're asking. I do actually have a lot of experience in this area, but I really recommend it for a good solid read. Now today's lesson is going to be on caster. Now you may hear a lot of the time my car reviews, I talk about feeling that the steering weight needs more caster to it to get that steering weight going. And other comments like that saying that the car needs more caster. And this is an important one to understand in both what it affects on the handling side and what it affects on the driver feel side. So as far as the definition goes, caster is very simple. We take a wheel, looking at it from the side. If this is the front of the car, so that's the bonnet, comes back, cabin. And we look at the steering side of things. Caster is basically the angle around which the wheel assembly pivots with respect to the vertical. So that angle there. So we incline our angle of rotation, so whether that's by picking double A arm pickup points there and there, or whether that's by moving our strut top back to here, we get an inclination in there, and that is what is known as caster. Now as far as sign convention goes, this direction here is known as positive caster, and the other way is known as negative caster. Almost every car you'll find will have positive caster to some degrees. Common numbers are from around sort of three to six degrees for a road car, although obviously there are outliers to this more and less. Now what does caster actually do? Well, several things. The most dominant thing it does is cause the tire's camber angle to change as you spin the steering. Now this means that as you turn into a corner, your tires essentially lean into a corner like a motorbike and that allows you to get better camber angles and thus get more grip. Now if you're confused about camber you can watch my other videos on that. And so by increasing the caster we can actually run less camber when the car's going in a straight line because once you turn it into a corner and apply some steering angle the camber will appear accordingly. And this can be good for road cars when you don't want so much caster that you're getting wear properties and stuff like that in the straight line, but you still want it to handle all right in corners. So what does caster do in terms of what the driver feels at the steering wheel? Well, if you remember from my tire videos, we have a contact patch. and that contact patch has a center of sort of force on it. Now, if we look at this caster axis, we can see that if we imagine a car in a corner, lateral grip, side force, so force going into the whiteboard right now, this contact patch is gonna be forced that way. Let's just assume that it's at the center of where the tire is. It's not, but let's assume that. So it's pushing there. Distance from here to here, the mechanical trail will produce a moment arm or a torque around this axis here. So we'll have a twisting force turning the tire in. So as you turn in, the distance from here to here will cause that steering wheel to give you force feedback. Now, we can see that this distance here to here can actually change without the caster changing. So if we move these points back here on the wheel and have this line intersect with there, you would actually get no steering feel despite there being a significant amount of caster. And this is something that people don't consider. They're like, add more caster for more steering feel. But if you pick up points from the wrong spot, you're not going to feel it anyway. But even with these changes, you'll still end up with the same sort of camber curves coming in. So the camber curve is dependent on the caster. The steering weight is not dependent on the caster, but changing the caster will change this distance for a fixed lower point and thus will change the steering weight. Complicated, I know, but you should be able to work your head around that. Now, just like camber, caster will generally increase grip the more you add up until the point where the tire cannot take the rate of camber change you're getting or you're getting too much total camber on it and your contact patch shape is all wrong and then your tire is just not gonna function properly. So the caster is good up until the limit. You wanna add caster until you're losing grip, wind it off a tiny bit and then you're perfect. Of course, when you're doing caster, you have to consider that the kingpin inclination is offsetting your caster gain. So watch my video on kingpin inclination for that and it's important that you consider these two things in parallel because what works for one set of caster 
with one set of king pin inclination angle will not work if you change the king pin inclination angle. Now that's one of the things with off-road cars is they have to run quite a lot of car stuff, big off-road buggies, because they need a lot of king pin inclination angle to get over the fact that packaging their tires is really hard and they're gonna have very bad scrub radii if it's not all mated up. So I suggest you check out all those videos that I've put out on that material if you wanna find out more. So that's the basics of caster. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to check out the other ones on the similar suspension topics. And if you liked it, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And hopefully, see you next time.